in the long history of mankind. Different civilizations, like beautiful waves in the long river, are shining brightly under the same sun. Each wave has its own beautiful name, such as Chinese civilization, Greek civilization, Mesopotamia civilization, Egyptian civilization, Indian civilization, and so on. These civilizations have left a trail of footprints throughout human history. Sometimes they move forward alone. Sometimes their journeys coincide. And sometimes they travel different paths. Different civilizations are relatively independent, while draw on each other's strengths through exchanges. As early as the Qin and Han dynasties more than 2,000 years ago, China, through the two major channels of land and sea, or known in the world as the Silk Road, has started to communicate and establish friendship with many countries and regions in Asia, Europe, and Africa. From the perspective of the history of world science and technology, the four great inventions of ancient China have played a great role in the evolution of modern civilization because of their widespread. From the perspective of the history of cultural transmission, the fine traditional Chinese culture represented by Confucianism and Taoism also played a significant role in inspiring Renaissance in the West. The Zen culture, integrating Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism, has also been spread to the world. Confucian tenets such as harmony in diversity and do unto others as you would have them do unto you, believe that different civilizations should seek common ground while preserving differences, respect each other, and learn from each other, which still have vibrant momentum and practical significance today. The values advocated by the Chinese civilization are highly consistent with humanity's common values of peace, development, equity, justice, democracy, and freedom. The Chinese civilization will walk hand in hand with different civilizations in the world to achieve the lofty goal of humanity's common values. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the eighth Nishan Forum on World Civilizations. My name is Tian Wei of CGTN. It's such an honor to be the moderator for this specific dialogue among diplomats, which is featuring diversity and mutual learning of civilizations. You know, coming to this place, Chufu, the birthplace of Confucius. It gives us a much better opportunity to understand the real essence of the philosophical thoughts of this gigantic figure in world history. It also gives us an opportunity to understand the contributions that he and also his followers have been making for the world. But the world is not just limited to Confucius and Confucianism, but rather various civilizations, diverse cultures. And that is why we are here to discuss the mutual understanding and learning of civilizations. So we are having a wonderful panel coming from Asia and Africa, both here online and on site with us to explore this topic. I'm very honored to introduce to you the speakers today. Sergei Manasarian, Ambassador of Armenia to China. Mohammed Said, Envoy Extraordinary and Minister Plenipotentiary of Embassy of Ethiopia in China. Sidi Kwan Chenta Densuan, Minister Counselor of Royal Thai Embassy in China. Antonio da Costa Gaspar, Councillor of Embassy of the Republic of Mozambique to China. Nasrin Fatima, Councillor of Embassy of Pakistan in China. When we talk about diversity and mutual learning of civilizations, it's better that we start the process of learning. So let's do that. Let's hear from all our panelists about how unique their cultures are 
and how they would like to share the, their cultures with us. Let me go to um, Ethiopia. Mr. Said. Ethiopian uh, civilization is uh, uh, the most uh, ancient one. It is uh, more than, uh, it is about three years ago we are talking about. Uh, that civilization is uh, manifested in writing scripts. Uh, Ethiopia uh, has its own uh, scripts to write. Uh, also manifested uh, in different handcrafts and uh, architecture uh, uh, products. Uh, all of these uh, manifested uh, the ancient civilization of that country. Beyond that, uh, the, coffee, the coffee we drink uh, comes from Ethiopia. The name uh, Kafa uh, is changed to uh, coffee through time. So uh, Ethiopia is uh, the source of uh, the coffee we drink. Ethiopia is um, uh, among the first countries to accept religions, uh, Christianity in the fourth century and the, uh, Islam in the sixth century. For that matter, the third mosque uh, of the Muslim is in Ethiopia. We call it uh, Najashi. Uh, that uh, is the result of uh, asylum giving for the uh, Muslim uh, uh, believers at that time by the king of Ethiopia, the so-called Najashi. Ambassador Manasarian. For a very long time, we have always thought that the, both the Eastern and Western influences were very, very important for Armenia, and this meant we have a very unique culture of our own. Looking objectively at our history and our realities, Armenia's culture and civilization did not just develop on the lands of Armenia, but also in Asia and in many other countries in the world. In Armenia diaspora societies, our cultures are being spread around the world. And we have also absorbed many sources of nutrients from other cultures. All of these essences of various cultures have been taken in by the Armenian people. Our religion, our civilization were a result of the learnings from many other cultures. And this is a source of vitality and energy for our people. Different to many other ancient cultures in the world, we have maintained our own language, we have maintained our own written language. And this proves that we have the ability to maintain the uniqueness of our people. Talking about our contribution to the world civilization, we have indeed made our contribution to the world civilization and cultures. So many of us have been traveling to Thailand and absolutely love the country and the hospitality, both the industry and the people themselves. So may I invite uh, to help to let us understand there's something that we don't know about Thailand. Would you like to share that with us? We receive Buddhism from India and also we get a Confucius idea concept from China as well. So I think we are in the middle between the two great civilizations and that should be the root of the Thai cultures. Talk about me myself, I'm the my grandparents are immigrants from China. So I grew up with the, all the Chinese traditions at home. We um, practice some cultural rights. Today, Africa is on its way for modernization. How that culture has also been evolving as a result is a fascinating topic to all of us. So from Mozambique, uh, Mr. Gaspar, would you like to share that with us? In the case of Mozambique, maybe different from other countries of Africa, uh, our unique situation is that first, diversity. Second, we are more mixture rather than uh, something made from the scratch. Second, 
when the colonizer they came, one of the very important activity they did, they suppressed our civilization, or at least they tried to, to suppress our core values and our culture. So we suffered a lot of influence. The influence which we can see it right now in a language. Back home we speak Portuguese. Portuguese is not our language. We were not allowed to speak our own national language. Even a dialect, if, if you like it. Pakistan diplomat, our Miss Fatina, the only lady sitting here. I'm so proud that we have also a women representative here about how Pakistan is looking at its own unique culture. Yes, talking about Pakistani culture, we have uh, thousands of years of history, but also when uh, we talk about cultural cooperation between Pakistan and China, it has a very long history and its origin can be traced back to thousands of years when uh, China and the regions that now constitute Pakistan, uh, they used to be linked through the Silk Road. And um, uh, uh, records show from as early as 5th century that Chinese monks and envoys, they traveled to Taxila and other ancient places in Pakistan in search of peace and knowledge. This uh, civilizational bond that existed between the two countries since centuries, it uh, continued naturally. And then the two countries decided to establish diplomatic relations in May 1951. And uh, then the economic and trade ties and the cultural ties, they further strengthened. And in this regard, in 1965, Pakistan and China signed the Cultural Cooperation Agreement. And uh, that uh, was just to give a more uh, mechanism to the cultural cooperation between the two countries. And there's an executive program signed under the Cultural Cooperation Agreement, um, uh, which um, oversees the mechanisms such as youth exchanges, art, literature, education, and even sports affairs as well. So the uh, Pakistan-China friendship has been continuing since ages, and the two countries, they also um, uh, cooperate in uh, affairs such as cultural relics, archives, and publications. Now I want you to take a look at the photo on the big screen, describing different civilizations in our human history. Some of them are well known already, some of them are about what you have just said, rediscovering our cultural roots. Uh, I would like to know, Ms. Ambassador, how you are seeing the cooperation between China and your country, and how is that actually help both countries and beyond for mutual learning especially at the height of civilizations. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, as you may know, the ties between Armenian and China people are traced back uh, to the ancient times. We share a long history of civilization, value-based friendship and cooperation since the ancient Silk Road. Although the coronavirus has seriously harmed the regularity of our agenda, I'm speaking about the cultural exchange. Uh, we still have many projects to be implemented, and we remain steadily committed to developing our cooperation to uh, uh, the new level. Before the pandemic, we organized mutual exchanges uh, with our Chinese friends, such as exhibitions, concerts, Armenian artists participated in several festivals in China, and vice versa. Uh, so thank you very much for your question and uh, a few words uh, about uh, uh, diversity of the uh, civilizations, di diversity uh, of the, our cultures and traditions. So very interesting examples. I uh, would like to speak uh, about a um, uh, very inter interesting situation between, uh, for example, Armenia and uh, Ethiopia. My Ethiopian colleagues presented in 
or offline regime. And I would like to say that both countries, Armenia and Ethiopia, historically Christian country, we're located very far from each other. But it's very interesting. Our churches are the same. And uh, Armenian priests can serve in Ethiopian church and vice versa. This is a very interesting situation. And uh, this is a, a very important element. Our powerful in our diversity. This is a historical fact. So thank you very much for your question. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, I, I love that answer you gave. You not only talk about your own country, and you also find a partner on the stage. <laughs> it's wonderful. I see uh, Mr. Saeed uh, coming from Ethiopia, keep on nodding his head uh, with a big frequency, <laughs> shall I say. Uh, it's wonderful because uh, it's just as all of you just said, we were not separated. We have been together, and the logic is about being together. Mr. Saeed, uh, I think you have to respond to Mr. Ambassador right now. I would like to thank uh, Ambassador of Armenia. Um, uh, he already raised an important issue. Uh, the people of Armen um, and the, uh, the people of Ethiopia uh, do have uh, a good relation. Uh, the so-called Armens in Ethiopia uh, are uh, um, uh, a family of Ethiopians, uh, I can say. Uh, there is a strong historical um, attachment, uh, a historical attachment uh, not only with Armenians, even uh, due to the religious uh, association, uh, even with uh, uh, Russia, um, uh, similar uh, relation is there, but uh, uh, with Armenians, there is a strong relation and affiliation. Uh, so I would like to thank him for raising this issue. Uh, in relation to Ethiopia and China, uh, when we say cultural exchange, um, it can be done formally, intentionally, or informally, unintentionally. The most important is the, the informal one. There are so many uh, companies operate in Ethiopia. Uh, and the, there are uh, so many Chinese uh, uh, participate uh, in the socioeconomic uh, situation of Ethiopia. And there are so many traders from Ethiopia to China, from China to Ethiopia. So the cultural exchange is, uh, in most cases, exercised informally. Um, you may not plan, but uh, uh, naturally, when, it, when there is uh, economic and social interaction between two countries, the cultural ex um, exchange is uh, very huge, and uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, very effective one. So may I ask our high colleague, there has been a lot of debates about, you know, to what extent you rediscover your ancient cultural roots. Uh, whether the more we know about it, the more confused we become. Well, um, I think the civilizations as we, as we are discussing now is a living one. There's nothing that can be, if it, if it continues to today, it means that it has developed over time. There's nothing permanent or stagnant and the, by being living things, um, the civil, civilization has to be um, resilient. So now we are facing pandemic. The civilization such as shaking hands has to be gone. A lot of things has changed. The civilization, the culture itself has to be responding to um, pandemics technical technology advancement or climate change even so that it can continue to be uh, living in the human society in our um, now so-called countries. Going to you, Mr. Gasper, how do you see the rediscovering of the cultural roots and how will that fit and help us today? To discover ourselves, what do we see, what do we do? 
For instance, look at language. We are introducing our own terms in the Portuguese. Like you know, there is a American English, UK English, New Zealand English, South Africa English, in Portuguese as well. We have a small difference. In Portuguese from Brazil, from Portugal, and from Angola, from Mozambique as well. San Tome, let's say all those uh, uh, speaking, Portuguese speaking countries. Yeah, uh, and then uh, again, our cooperation with uh, China, it's uh, conducted at its three dimensions, bilateral, multilateral, and uh, there is uh, another dimension which uh, Mozambique and others, Portuguese speaking country, they are cooperated through Macau. So they call uh, Macau Forum. There is a much big, big, big wind of, of opportunity to, to get some knowledge, some resources from this country right. uh, in order to boost not only the cooperation, but also to discover ourselves. And there are different school of thoughts uh, in the human history all the time including now. Recently, people have been discussing about a community of shared future for mankind. Of course, that's an idea initiated by China, but also has been winning a lot of uh, uh, support and great debates among many. Uh, Ms. Patina, tell me more about your thoughts. Like you mentioned, the concept of community with a shared future, and I think it's a very um, interesting thought, and it's uh, it's very pertinent in uh, today's world, which is grappling with global pandemic and other geopolitical um, efforts. And I think uh, um, this is something where Pakistan and China, they have similarity of views, because uh, in a recent interaction between the leadership and also in people-to-people -people exchanges, we believe that we are close neighbors linked by mountains and rivers, and we have a shared future. Uh, ancient Silk uh, Route has actually inspired the flow of uh, goods, and not just goods, but inspired the flow of ideas and exchange of ideas uh, between uh, greater civilizations of Asia, and especially between the two uh, great civilizations. We're talking about Buddhism and uh, uh, Islam as well. And uh, uh, if, uh, if I can add a little bit about Chinese civilization, I think it has impacted uh, the uh, modern day history in many ways, and uh, not just culture, uh, but its governance system, development, and other areas have added uh, new dimensions to the modern day uh, living as well. What I want to ask you before we wrap up is, what can we do now together? Um, we know that uh, culture is knowledge acquired and shared over time uh, within certain community. We know that Asia and Africa, they are culturally collectivist, meaning that we share. Again, the word sharing, the good ideas like this should be uh, replicated at a different level so that many people can understand, at least to make a distinction between culture and, uh, and, 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 and civilization. Because you can have a culture without a civilization, but you cannot have a civilization without a culture. culture. Miss Fatina. Um, like it was said earlier, dialogue is very important. Dialogue among civilizations and different cultures, it's because we have a lot of uh, mutual learning to learn from each other. And in this, uh, we are blessed with a diverse right. world, with diverse cultures, and all come from thousands of years of uh, civilizations and history. And I think we have a lot to learn from each other's uh, strengths and a lot to learn from each other's 
history and uh, uh, this uh, and forums like Nishan Forum uh, is a very uh, useful opportunity to hold this dialogue and to find similarities among uh, different civilizations and cultures. Mr. Said, and then also. Uh, we uh, exist here now, it is due to the uh, fact that the past generation uh, sacrificed a lot uh, for the coming generation. So uh, uh, the uh, new generation should appreciate uh, the wisdom of the past generation and uh, the media outlets should encourage participation of the users to consult each other ab about their faith. Our faith is uh, uh, together. Mm. Uh, we couldn't uh, uh, live a good life in isolation. That is my point. Mr. Chen Dan Su Wan. I think I value the um, people to people um, relationship connectivity. That's why Thailand has um, put our consulate general in, in, in Qingdao. We, I think face to face communication is one of the important things. Mm. And also, the cooperation that the consulate is doing is trying to link have a partner universities between university in Shandong and university in Thailand so that we have the more specific um, cooperation that you can see the human faces from it. Mm. I think that's the uh, most beneficial cooperation that uh, we should do for our youth. Mm. So Ms. Ambassador, also wrapping up the conversation, your thoughts on what can we do together now? By means, by means, the base for everything is a culture. Because culture is everywhere in all sphere of our life. We are speaking about business, uh, culture of business. We are speaking about uh, unless uh, about uh, culture of negotiation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in our relation uh, with China, and not only with China, we are guided by this motto. I can speak unless about uh, our achievements, our future plans. But if I understand, we have not uh, enough time for that. And finally, I would like to say that we are open for further cooperation uh, with our Ch Ch uh, China in all uh, China partners with all spheres, particularly in culture. And I would like to seize this opportunity to express our willingness to combine efforts with our Chinese counterparts to revitalize and our cooperation and uh, cultivate new accomplishments in bilateral agenda. Thank you so much, our guests from Armenia, from Ethiopia, Thailand, Mozambique, and Pakistan, and many of those who are participating online and offline listening to our conversation. All the best. Let the dialogue continue. I'm Tian Wei. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now. <laughs>